Father, Lord, we come under your presence, your atmosphere this morning. Thank you for bringing us today to step, to come to you, to come to your feet, to learn of you, to be touched by you, to be visited by your spirit. We ask that all good things will happen to us today as we desire. Even But that is not even going to be my 
focus. My focus tonight, this morning, is in verse 17. That this man that glory that gloried himself in being in church, what he says is therefore started happening in his presence and he took no notice. There are certain things that's vividly done in our presence. that God is going to change something about you. I'm not talking about God is going to do something for you. That when you stepped into church this morning, you had an expectation somewhere in your subconscious that God is going to challenge certain things in your life and move you from where you are to where you need to be that place that will satisfy you. How do we still have expectations that God is going to change us it has become a norm that we are just there. One of the things we dread most in this part of the world to do is what is called medical checkup. And why do we dread it? Because sometimes you feel you are sick, you go to a doctor and they pronounce that you are healthy. And some other times you think you are so healthy and they, they encourage us. Since they've been giving me that counsel, I've been, it's been hard for me to eat it. Just once in a year, do a comprehensive, it's a comprehensive body. How many of you have been given that counsel to before? Do a comprehensive examination of yourself, let them check your pancreas, check your liver, you know, just do some testing. Because many of times people die more when they tell themselves is wrong. You know what I'm talking about. Ignorance is please, you know. Actually, we noticed an Omona, eh? Omona, pastors are before I don't even know what I'm talking about. So we ignore it. And many people are living dead. They are almost dying, even though they have no symptoms because they don't do thorough examination. And the Bible says we should we must examine ourselves whether we are in the faith, which means you can think you are in the faith and you are not in it. So in Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24, Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24, the psalmist says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Somebody said to God this man, say, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. No matter how we try to make it look like we never have fears, we are all sometimes afflicted and assailed with fears. Is this the country I have raised my children? Has it ever happened? I've forgotten you. Let me tell you what the Bible called them. The, that thought. Do you know what the Bible called it? Anxieties. I know you, you don't want to call it anxiety. You want to say, I'm just being thoughtful. So sometimes you just have to be defining for yourself. Take no thought for tomorrow because you think it's a thought, but the truth of the matter is that it is just pure anxiety. anxiety. Search me, God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me. Which means I can be violating something that I thought is not even reflected in my life. I think I'm so perfect. And said, he said, God, I need your eyes to see me because there are certain things about me that my own eyes can't even see. See if there's any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This looks like a soul medical checkup. Search me. Don't help me not to mistake preaching for obedience. Help me not to mistake attendance for conformity. 
Search me, O Lord. And if there's any wicked thing in me, I might even be preaching against it and I yet I'm reflecting it. Lead me in the everlasting. If, if there's anything, that's just a prayer point to take over. Because you will need this experience at one point or the other in your life. Where God must explain you to yourself. There is a point when we first come into Christ, it's so glaring because all the bad things you used to do, you do them no more. You were bad and you became good. Are you following me? So that's clear. So things stop, things change. But when you get into this place, it becomes a bit of a force because you might not be doing bad things. I'll be filled with anxieties. I'll be filled with Right. In fact, sometimes the, 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 the gospel of works is so powerful that it, is, it satisfies man to feel like what he is, he handed. it. Yeah. Works always resurrect no matter where people start from. That's why you keep putting it down, you put, keep crucifying your body and keep crucifying yourself so that you trust in nothing else but Christ and being crucified. Is rising. And it can rise so much that we have a religious toga that you feel it's a righteous virtue, except God searches you and leads you in the way everlasting. I'm always afraid how this thing started with. How many of you can cast your mind back to your first three months of being born again? The real one, not the social media. <laughs> Come out, come out now. Those days when we get born again, we cry. And nobody beats us, but we cry because it's not it's automatic. Because you will know something say we got that you know people chew down to the altar, Father, thank you. Confess after we say, Father, Lord, I believe in you. I believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord and he was raised from the dead. I thank you, born again. Hallelujah. Did you say you didn't use right to this day? Everybody, we are even comparing how you spoke. To the person that is standing beside you. Well, I didn't say you are not born again because I'm not born. But recently, this thing has become so normal. In fact, sometimes people do so many things and they still tell you I'm born again. That's one of the reasons why the gospel of grace is so powerful outside because everybody wants to live their life and still get claim. Tell them that thing is not you are judging me, judge no man. That's a very confident gospel. Have you noticed? Very confident for all of us. But if we are not careful, we become we feel. That's why I said I feel like God should tell us some home truths. The word home truths, that's what that's the title of the song. Home truths means it's an unpleasant fact. That you learn about yourself usually you from someone else. Let me give you a simple example. So it's for a particular lady. One guy wanted to get her who are happy, was happy, finally, finally. And you know, normally she began to, after she started the year, she basically began to be not yet, not. Definitely, she was not left because there were still things that were not hard enough in the guy's life. We, I know this group, so. so she felt she was not left. <laughs> then she went to this pastor. So the pastor looked at her, shoot her, go fine. Now, she, he was not demonizing her, but was making her feel like, oh, this is so bad. <laughs> I cannot continue to pray. I have seen your answer. Sometimes you need to be told the whole truth that you are not always going to be 23. That you are not as young as you think you are. Some of us need to be told the whole truth that what you are going through is no state, is no man. And they have to you want to, you want to just marry and be a billionaire in one year. What's wrong with you? When you talk, 
saw I see wisdom. The idea is there. Now don't worry, I like that lady personally, but sometimes she does that anyway. I'm not sure why, man. She can't even be my friend. <laughs> in first Samuel chapter 4 there is a story the background of that story is that Israel was living in apostasy it was the days of Eli Eli was one of the worst priests of Israel they had two sons, Ophni and Phineas who slept with women at the door of the temple they did not just violate the principle of God they were violating the principle of God right in the temple these sons of Eli were so bad that the Bible said they will be fighting for the offering of God with God. We've not heard it before. That any time the people brought an offering, they would say, you see, see, the priests want fresh meat, not the one that is spoiled. And the people say, let us first offer it to God, then you can take it. And he said, no, 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 the priests want fresh meat. It got so bad that people, we didn't know whether it was the priests who were serving or the God. Some of us have come, come into such, such conflicts even in our time. That was the background of the apostasy of Israel. But in 1 Samuel chapter 4, the Philistines came against Israel. Israel went to fight the battle, and the Philistines began to defeat them because when you are not on God's side, you are vulnerable to them. And you know, when the Philistines began to defeat them, Instead of them to look at themselves and say, where did we go wrong? How many of you know God did not ordain your life to be a hard life? Yeah. How many of you agree that God didn't ordain that you should live in defeat? Yeah. I'm not saying you will not go through tribulation. I'm not saying you will not be distressed. But the Bible even said, even if our outward man is perishing, our inward man is renewed. If your outward man is perishing, and your inward man is perishing, it is not God, it is you. Yeah. Something is wrong somewhere. Yeah. But many times, instead of looking at look at what they just, they just did the convenient thing. The Bible said, the same woman said, go bring the heart of God. It's about God meeting If you don't know how powerful the act is, then that is what the Jordan saw. Yeah. Amen. And the Jordan fled. Amen. The act is so powerful that when it sets out for 40 years, Israel was moving in the wilderness. The act brought the glory of God. When you place the act in the tent, the cloud of God's glory is there. When they started fighting, priests, Ophne and Phineas. In fact, it got so bad, they took that and they said, oh, what exactly is there? What demystified the heart was not the power of the Philistines, it was the rebellion of God's people. God is powerful, but it is if my people who are called by me, they will humble themselves and they will pray. Things will go to be. When something happens, you want to pull that thing out, wave it, and God moves. Read 1 Samuel chapter 4. You might not be far from that story. God's book, they capture the ark. They will take your handkerchief. Which word? Where? That's how you just bring the act because there is a battle. 
and you expect God to show up. He won't. Your heart is not there. Good preaching doesn't save people. Obedience does. That's a whole truth. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, from verse 1 to 14, there was another battle. At this time, the ark was already captured and the ark had returned. Then the men of Kedar Jerem came and took the ark of the Lord and brought it into the house of Abinadab on the hill and consecrated Eliezer his son to keep the ark of the Lord. The ark remained in Kedar Jerem a long time. It was there 20 years. And all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. So the ark was still there, but that doesn't mean their, their joy came. Because God does not need the presence of the ark. He needs the heart. So Samuel spoke to all the house of Israel and said, if you return to the Lord with all your hearts. That's what God is looking for. The heart can be absent, the heart can be present, and there is no difference. You don't get it. Because what makes, what changes the atmosphere, what changes the narration is the state of the heart of people. If you return to the Lord with all your heart, and put away the foreign gods and the asteroids from among you and prepare your heart for the Lord. Tell your neighbor, prepare your heart. Prepare your heart. Prepare. Stop thinking no happen by chance. Stop thinking obeying God will happen by chance. You have to He will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the children of Israel put away the powers and the asteroids and serve the Lord only. You can't serve the Lord with any other thing. When you want to have God, He's the only God. There is no God beside Him. Things fall down when God comes in this place. So the, that don't fell down feet. Must be something that falls down when God shall have his place because there is no God beside him. Then, so Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mizpah. I will pray to the Lord for you. Let me rush because of time. They gathered together at Mizpah, they drew water, they poured it out before the Lord. That, that's symbolic because when you pour water out, you can't gather it back. It's a man that is totally. I say, when you don't move on my behalf, nothing can happen. I'm prostrate before you. I can't gather myself back except to pull me back. That is a symbol of a life that is poured out. He said, pour out your heart like waters before the Lord. It was a symbol of a man pouring out. He said, because if you keep it there, every time you put water in a jar, in a, in a jar it's always heavier. If you want it to be like that, you pour it out. If you want your life to be like that, you must cast your bodies. You must pour it out. You must pour it out. Because if you don't pour it out, you will carry it yourself. So the politics before the law, they fasted there. They said, We have sinned against the law. They said, Stop saying, We are the children of Abraham. Sometimes you need to tell yourself, We have Samuel judged the children of Israel at Mizpah. Now the Philistines and the children of Israel are gathered together at Mizpah. The Lord of the Philistines went against Israel. And when the children of Israel had it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And this time they didn't go to bring what? They are. So the children of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry out to the Lord for us, for that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. And Samuel took a suckling lamb. Uh, that's another symbolic thing. Is a lamb that cannot survive outside of his mother. He's saying, God, we victory. We are suckling. We are desired as newborn babies. Desire the sincere milk of the world that you might grow there. If God is not releasing something, there's no growth on our side. There's no other wisdom we can find in any other place. He took a suckling lamb and offered it as a whole bottle free. The word whole means they did not hold back any part. 
sabe Now Samuel was offering the problem for the Philistines. He didn't hear about it, but the Lord turned them with a loud thunder. That they, they confused them and they were overcome before Israel. That was where Samuel called the Lord as elders. The Lord helps the people who prepare their heart. Not people who carry the ark and have a symbol. Are we together, church? We need to begin to prepare our heart in true devotion and walk with God. I'm afraid that Christianity is true. I'm getting afraid. How many of you have really had a question in recent time and you went into your room and locked up and said, God, I want you to. That's Christianity. That's what it means to have a relationship with God. For when he come, he will come to save his people from their sin, and he will be which means God is with us. Now, in your mind, God is with us. It's just something that God is with us. God doesn't just want you to know God is with you. God wants you to have an experiential Amen. presence. That's why when Jesus came and, and fulfilled God is with us, he sent forth his spirit into our heart. Which means we can have a living experience of the presence of Jesus in our lives today. Don't carry a dead heart that can't talk to you, that you can't pour your heart before. As though you have no God. Hey, let me tell you. I just want to talk to you. Teach me. Teach me. Everybody is complaining about this thing in my life. Teach me. The truth is that I can't, I can't, I can't seem to act better. But everybody is still saying it's wrong. What? What? What is the answer to this thing in your work? That's what is called a cheat. Yeah. But it is only when you want God to do a magic man. Like, oh wow! This week they said there are three people they want to promote in my office. Lord, you said I will be the heir only and not the table. That's how you are just like Israelites whose heart who have corrupted priests, but who want God to give them victory. God is bigger than that. I don't think I can even get into this message. I'm just giving you this one. I can't. Look at what the Bible says in James chapter 1, verse 21. Therefore, lay aside. All feelings and overflow of wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is what able, able to save yes. your souls. Yes, but be doers of the word. What I'm telling you this morning you must have an action. Do you hear what I'm saying? If this thing is true. If it's ever going to be real in your life, there must be a doing. Be doers of the word, not errors only. What does that do to you? What does that do? Deceiving yourself. yourself. Can I tell you the truth? Most Christians are deceived. And I'm not talking about the fact that they believe in marriage. I'm talking about the fact that they keep coming to church and they are soon hearing a sermon is proof. Yes, oh! But as they step out, if you don't do, hearing can't profit you. It's like eating without digesting. You will not, it will, it will come from you. That's why after some time, instead of the word to grow you, your heart has become dull to eat. Normal to hear, you are con constipated, you are congested. Because you know what's happening? There is no stepping out to do. There are some growths that can never happen to you until you take what you have had and you tell another person. No, can we tell ourselves of what you do? Not this one, the other way. They are not decided, they are not leading by this guy. God will not hear you. You cannot, you cannot. 
not grow holy like that. If I keep laying hands on you every Sunday, receive the mantle, the impartation, this is the impartation, this is the kelly, I remove my shoe, I put it on you, but you sit down, you are doing nothing, it will not work. You are not hearing me. You are not hearing me. You see, I, I just had a conflict in my mind recently, and I told my dad, look how old hair now. I don't think I'm happy. Oh, this one, all of you guys. <laughs> With the girl. <laughs> you are just fascinated. I need more than fascination. Because if we are just fascinated, we will end up deceiving. Are you following me? Deceiving yourself. Yes. For he observed that we have joined the gospel. The gospel of the For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, it's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. The word will always do something, will show you something. Yes? For he observes himself and goes away and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. That is not the reason why you had the mirror. The mirror should just not just leave you with the moment, we leave you to a must leave you with not just the moment, you must leave the memory. You must understand. So when they show you a picture and they say, This is your face, and this is not my face. Say, my join you. Say, they will join me. Now, when they tell you this man looks like you and they show you a picture and say the man does not look at you, why are you seeing your face at that time? How do you know it's not looking like you? Because the mirror has done its work and you are not a forgetful error or see or, 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 or somebody that saw what you saw on the mirror, you it's Somewhere in your memory, yeah. you take the word out from here. That's when it profits. You don't just hear it. You take it from here. You take it into your driving. You take it into that business meeting. It must be there, somewhere stuck in your mind. So when you are looking at something, you are judging that thing from the picture of what you have been taught. That's when it prospers. He observes and goes away. Then you forget what kind of man he was. But he who looks into a perfect law of liberty and continues in it is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one, this one, who is that one? Who is that one? They didn't put any name. It is your response that will determine whether it is accurate for you or not. This one will be blessed in what he does. There are things God is correcting with us for 10 years, 5 years. You are glorying your stupidity because the word has been correcting you, but you refuse it. You have now called a match. I will show you, I've never seen the story of a man who was stubbornness to where God is taking you. I've never seen the story of a man that where God is taking Stubbornness is as witchcraft, yeah. it's as rebellion. So the day Saul disobeyed God, God told him, You know what you have done? He said, uh, what did he call it? The disobedience is as witchcraft. Where did he end eventually? Witchcraft. It was the witchcraft. Yeah. You see, it was the day he went to the necromancer that you are troubled. But that's not where it started. God told him the day it started. That this is your stubbornness. This is where it's taking you. It's the same thing as the God. That's why God judged him that day. You thought God judged him when he would go to the person that was speaking with the dead. God judged him the day of the stubbornness of his heart. Because before God, it was the same thing. As he just stayed in it, he just began to manifest. Because nobody can talk to him. It's his God. It's his law. It's his right. It's himself. Are you following me? But he will lose into the power of liberty and continues in it. He's not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the world. This one will be blessed in what he does. Yes. If any one of you think he's religious and he does not breathe through his tongue, Will be when they are talking there, they are talking, they are fighting. Right? They've caught you five fights this year. The man wrote it. I see. <laughs> then you're not going to say, Mobroko, you say, You want to bring the ark and you want victory? And God has been asking for your tongue. Because you're comparing with your way. The way you are talking. Some of you God has 
that are acting for your mind, the way you think. Say, what should be me? That's why we come, we confidently sit in this atmosphere with little transformation. I don't know where I get this. We are, do we pray again? Do, do Christians really pray? Because prayer does not just reveal God to you, it reveals you to yourself. It shows you how dependent you are. If anyone thinks it's religious, does not do this. But deceives what? You are not hearing. What does it do? So sometimes you can't blame any other person for your predicament. You can only blame yourself because you are not telling yourself the truth. It deceives its owner. This one's religion is what? Is useless. This thing can be effective, but if we are not careful, it will be what? The ark has opened the Jordan before, but we can, we can fall in his presence. Not because religion is useless, but this one's religion. The, the, the word religion, I know God is not in a religion, God is in a relationship. Maybe I should just put it in your language. This one's relationship claim is useless. Praise God. Verse 27. Pure and undefiled religion. So there's useless religion. There's what? Pure and undefiled religion. Are you following me, church? Somebody said there's useless religion. And there is pure and undefiled religion. This thing we are doing can become totally useless. Now, pure and unfair religion for God and Father is this to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted for the world. You must keep yourself. You can't interact with everything, you can't be found in everything and claim that you have a true walk with God. That's a useless religion. It's something to keep yourself away from. And I want God to deliver us from lying to ourselves. Isaiah 44, verse 13 to 20. Spoke about how people lie to themselves. Ah. What is this? This morning service is not rushing like that. First, first I remember. Look at what, look at this prophecy. It's beautiful. The craftsman stretches out his room. He marks out what, he, he marks out one with chalk. He fashions it with a plane. He marks it out like a compass. He, he makes it like the figure of a man. This is a man that wants to make an idol. According to the beauty of a man that may remain in the house, that is, he took a tree, then he made it like a man. And he cut down cedars for himself. And he takes the cypress and the oak. These are different trees. And he secures it for himself among the trees of the forest. He plants a pine and the rain nourishes it. And then it shall be for a man to burn. That is, when he cuts down the tree, he will take part of it. He can use it as what? Firewood. So he will take some of it and warm himself. Yes, he kindles it and bakes bread on it. Indeed, he makes a god. From the same tree he cut, he, he warmed himself, he baked bread, and made God. And now you are laughing. You should be But you are not obeying that. Because sometimes we do it where they are one grace to come. I just want to say, someone, someone, how long are there for No. One part is my, I use it for bread. One part, just to warm myself during winter. The other one, how long are there for you? How many of you expect God to call up for that? We should share, share, you know. When you are serving God, you just expect God to accept it like that. That is that that incoherence in this man is dropping in. People will go in this rebels, they will take an animal that is one eyed. Chicken that 
you know those chickens that are running? You know what they call me? They did like this. Then you kill them. How many of you will be like that? But you see, somehow when it is God, it's a God of mercy, of love, mercy. Hey, can I tell you the truth to God? This is God sees what you see.
Not unto us, O Lord, but unto you, unto, not unto us, but unto your name. Give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the Gentiles say, so where is their God? But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the works of men's hands. They have mouths, but they do not speak. Eyes they have, but they do not see. They have ears, but they do not hear. No see they have, but they do not smell. They have hands, but they do not and feet they are, but they do not walk. No, do they mutter through their truth? Those who make them are like them. When you serve an idol, you become as insensitive, inaccessible. Your eyes don't see. Because the man that is buried before you, the wood, it's not only the wood that is not seen. Man is not the, that worship makes the man as insensitive as what he serves. Yeah. His eyes don't see, his ears don't hear. I hope you are part of people that are hearing and they are hearing. Because if you are coming to church and you are hearing and you are not hearing, you are serving an idol. If truly you are serving God, the God you serve, yes, you will hear. If truly you are serving God, the God you serve sees you will see. You don't need to be told. There's, there's faculties will be alive in your life. Are we together? It is our obsession with our desires that we serve that blinds us from the things God is showing us. Let me just take a few moments. That's why Jesus told us we will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Tell your neighbor you will know the truth and the truth. When he said that in John chapter 8 verse 31 to 36, the decided that the truth told him. We have never been in bondage. There is no truth. They were so insensitive, so impervious, they didn't know how bound they were. Because they are not serving God. Because if they serve God, who sees they will see their state. So Jesus told them, He said, You don't know that whatsoever you use yourself to, you are the servant of it. You are a slave of sin. That's why I'm talking to you about being free. They thought he was talking about Romans. They couldn't perceive the language of Jesus. It was not because it was so coded, it was because of the state of their heart. I don't know whether you get that. So you come, and I'm so afraid that something powerful can become so in your heart. That's my fear. Something that can change nations. I know of your hearts. And there are nations that are looking for a drop of that. I've listened to men who have changed the world. Maurice Serulo went to home yesterday. I still listen to some. They don't even preach as much as you can. But you know what is happening today? We are too dull here. Too dull. Sacrifice and you are not sacrificing to God. It's a 
fearful reality. In Amos chapter 5, verse 25 to 27, look at this word God said. This word used to trouble me a lot when I read it. Look at what God said to Israel. Did you offer me sacrifices and offerings in the wilderness 40 years old as of Israel? Yes. You carry sickle to your king, chill your idol, starve your God, which you made for yourself. You are carrying something and doing something contrary. And in your mind, you are offering God. You can't lay offer. What you carry is what matters, not what you are doing. So God told them, those 40 years, not once did you think did your, did your sacrifice. For the only record in the scripture of the wilderness sacrifice, principally, was when they sacrificed to the golden calf. Cloud was over you by day, pillar by night. But don't think it was your sacrifice because when I went into your home, there was king. It's cool.
the four months locked down, and I said, you understand? Ah, you can't leave. You change, you stop using Go TV. You <laughs> <laughs> extra body. You said, yes, you from my room. Explorer. 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 <laughs> four months locked down. So, let me tell you your problem. It's not lack of money. Can I tell you the truth? The problem is not lack of money. You don't have a heart. Ah, yeah, baby. It's time for you. Don't worry. Please give me 15 minutes more for this. I must finish this exam. Because I've not started. Because I can understand someone for seven months. Ah. You keep saying the house of God. The house of God is there. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 1 to 14. Let me finish this up. I must finish this one. Israel went to God and said, Now, um, we want to inquire about the fast of the fifth month. They said, Fast, we used to fast in the fifth month. Now look at that verse. Zechariah chapter 7. They sent people to the priest to ask, should I weep in the fifth month and fast as I've done for so many years? Let's look at God's answer. The word of the Lord of hosts came to the same. Say to all the people in the land and the when you fasted and one in the fifth and seventh month during those seventh years, did you really fast for me? For me? Here we are, here for me. How many of you know suddenly that when you want to get something from God, there's a period of devotion? They did it in the 70 years. The 70 years was the years of captivity. So the years of captivity provoked them to be happy, fasted twice, the fifth and the seventh one, to God. And God looked at them. Do you do it for me? When you eat and drink, do you not eat and drink for yourself? Everything is about yourself now. Should you not have obeyed the words? It's so fearful 
that you can fast for 70 years and it didn't move God. And the most important thing is to God, you don't sit. He said, show mercy. Compassion to ah. everyone to his brother. Ah. I see fearful things in church. I see it. I see people who serve us. I see people like Michael. They are the one drumming every day. Ah, it's Michael what you Church will do. And we don't know what's happening to life. We are not concerned. We are not. Whether he's dying, whether he's living, whether he has graduated, whether he's working, nobody has that. But that's the problem. Your religion has become useless. Ah. It's useless. It's just nonsense. You don't ask. You don't seek nothing. You don't seek the welfare of nobody. You are the last. Man, like, no way, but it's not okay, but it's not my
So this is your year of glory. It is well with you. They have no plan. <laughs> but to drive to the person's house. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Some people are saying God bless you to people you have never known to see. Never Your mama Sasha. Today is your day. Your glory is in over. You know what you even did? You copied it from somewhere? You are so useless.
talking to my people. Stop lying to yourself that that's how you go. Faithless place. Why you, what is this was? And the guy there and you put your hand in your pocket. <laughs> and I told us, no, we are two minutes. Oh, what a miracle working God. He does not include you. <laughs> Let me tell you the one that gets me angry most. Most of us are so heartless. We don't want to be, we don't want to solve issues. We want to make it look like we are solving them. Let me explain to you. Somebody needs 5,000 men. You don't want to do it. Do you know what you would do? You bring 50 men. So that when they are mentioning, I will not tell you wrong way, you know, your name will be there. They will write 15. You have lied to your heart that you have. You, know you are a liar. That is the story of the widow's might. That is what is called giving. How did they put it? Those that give. Um, they give out, they give out. Those that give bounty, those that give sparingly, they speared. So that woman came. She gave. Then Jesus said, That woman said, The Bible said it was very rich men who are giving. Jesus did not consider that. He said, This woman has given more than all these people that came. Go read it. It's, it's somewhere in the book of, um, it's a Mark. Mark 12, 41 to 44. He said, This woman has given more than everybody because she gave all her life. There was, you can't give all without a heart. You can give things thoughtless because you have spared. And, uh, you know what pains me? Can I talk to you as a child?
God cannot mock. You can mock a man. You can play a man. church. That's why I call it home truth. Sorry with this, my letter. Let me put it in my language. If I made you sorry with this preaching, I do not regret it. What did I say? How to preach? Yes. <laughs> Though I did regret it, but I perceived that the same epistle made you sorry. Though only for a while. That's not. Now I rejoice. Not that you have been sorry, but that your sorrow. Led to repentance. What is repentance? A change of mind. Nothing will change in your life where your mind does not change. For you are made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. Preachers can dent your life. If we don't tell you some things, you will suffer loss, and the loss is from us. See, the reason why I wrote this thing is you to be complete. I don't want you to have a sense of loss. I don't want you to. Well, somebody that told me, they said, they said, they said, one of us here said, ah, we painted him that when he was on campus, he didn't have the experience that most of us have. Remember, you see Paul, when you see, the way we be talking, you think that we have raised something there because we, are, we, are, we got into it early. Amazing if just five years after school, the person or ten years after school is now looking back and there is a sense of loss. There is something that can be wrong in your life now without passing a loss. But in ten years time, they, they pass through they suffer. Work, so let me tell you. Do you understand? So that you suffer no loss. God cannot. Bible says, receive with meekness the implanted word of God that you may be saved. I want you to have an attitude of meekness this morning. Say, Father, I just receive your word. That's the most important thing. No matter where it's challenged, I don't want your ark to return without victory. I don't want the glory of it to be taken away. He said, don't deceive yourself. You cannot live in sin and expect the grace of God to be on the increase in your life. It doesn't work in such ways. You can't live in disobedience, in stubbornness, in, in anger and expect grace to increase. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I don't want to suffer loss in it. I don't want to look back and regret that I did not hit you. I don't want to look back and regret that I did not hit you. I don't mind. I don't mind if he's pulling me down now, if it looks like he's challenging me now, if it looks like he's making me feel uncomfortable. As long as I will gain the true profit of your spirit in it, I just want it. Keep me true. Lord Jesus, keep me true. Keep me true. Lord Jesus, keep me true. There's a race. And there's a race.
you. As you turn your heart in purity to the Lord, may the Lord deal with you with purity. As you turn your heart with truth to the Lord, may the Lord show you the truth of his covenant. May the Lord show you his defense. How he rises and fights for men. And how he walks with men and fulfills their purposes. The truth of the Lord will be established in your journey. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Receive from our hands this morning. Use for your glory. Thank you for the opportunity to give to your people. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah.